his sweep. They all use magic effects. Yeah, he doesn't actually like touch you. Right. He almost he has almost no physical attacks. His jump attacks are all magic based, which is just a really cool touch. And even his dash is a teleport. Yeah, so nobody else yeah. has that. It's now, very, very unique. Is he, in, is he invulnerable during that dash? He is not. It functions like a dash, right. but it's just a, a really cool visual touch for almost all of his moves. Like yeah. his... Sorry. Thanks, Derek. Sorry. There's one thing about playing in this game, but Derek's in the room and he has a controller. Yeah. He'll forget what we're do what we're trying to do and be like, I gotta push some buttons. That's nah, me, I push, push buttons. buttons. He's push just buttons. Uh, a childlike hype tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. I, I do want to say that when we were giving the comics out and everybody, you know, wanted them, the stream chat was just blowing by. Well, it's good stuff. Good stuff. It's because people are having fun. I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. So, I talked to John Edwards about this, actually, too, and, yes. like, one of his new design ideas was, like, he really wanted a lot of magic to be shown. Right. Like, a, most of the ways he moves and interacts are magic. Yeah, and it, and it really comes through. It's a really cool effect. Um, like, his 113 ends in kind of a projectile attack, and he can actually charge it. Or you can even cancel it, and then Ooh. go into a pr pressure or a guessing game. His one one two ends in this big pillar of fire. Oh, do the uh, two one 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 and three. Yeah, this is my favorite. <laughs> Goes into the zap. Right. That's a really good combo under. Love it. And uh, his back one down three up three actually ends in a stomp. But it's a magical stomp. But it's a magical stomp. Magical stomp. It's a magical stomp. A stomp. Brought to you by Magic. No. Yeah, his back two is a really good anti-air that's, again, he's not making physical contact, it's a, a pillar. Even his 4-3 and his back threes are magical infused back threes and 4-3s. Pure magic. Pure magic. Okay, moving along. So, his special moves are where he really shines. Mm -hmm. He has uh, some of the best long distance special moves. His fireball is very, very quick. I like to call that the pew. The pew, yeah, you, I, I do that while playing. Pew, 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 pew. It has a lo very fast recovery. It's very hard for the opponent to deal with. And the meter burn one actually shoots three. That's the pew, pew, pew. That's the pew, 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 right. right. So the idea is the opponent's trying to get in, and if you think they're going to commit to dashing or jumping, you go with the three, and they'll take a lot of damage. So would you say, like, of the characters we've shown, he's kind of the first true zoner? Or he's what I would call a hard zoner. That, that is his, that's what he does. Okay. So his second projectile is a Displacer Orb, which is a slower moving, bigger orb that he can then follow behind it or do his other projectile behind. He can do the 3-1. And that'll come on, force the opponent to take action. Or he can actually use a bar meter and stop it in place at any time. So he can stop it really close and then hide behind it. Or he can stop it right in front of the opponent. Or he can not stop it at all, and the opponent has to kind of guess which version of his projectile he's going to do. Some awesome. people are on the chat are saying that they really like the look of uh, Fate's magic. Yeah, in my opinion, he has some of the coolest effects in the game. It right. looks it looks great. And like, effects team, right? Yeah, effects yeah, team. yeah. Big shout And outs. I do, uh, do you want to say, I hope to have some of the effects team on at some point, because just a quick sub, I'm just going to break off real quickly. You know, the characters are the characters. You guys design them and you make them fight. One of the things that really gives them their personality is the effects team. Like yep. they really make they make what you guys do sing. Just like I mean, really everybody in the building. Yes, absolutely. Does that? But we do. The effects team are a very big part of how the game looks. Mm -hmm. so we're hoping to have uh, some of them on soon to talk about stuff. And there's absolutely gorgeous effects in this yep. game. And I, I love the details and the animation that, that have a personality come out. Like just look at his back walk. How. He actually moves right. while he's back walking, doing his little magical we, we stuff. We talked to Nick about how the, the, the fact that like the thing that makes the characters so much fun in Injustice 2 is that they, they play well, they're fun to play, but they're so deeply like the made. Personality their personality is, is yeah. yeah, it flows through. So um, that's just his normal three, right? Yeah, that's just his standing three. Oh, it's so really good. cool. His heart attack is literally not. He does nothing physical at all. So um, in addition to his two projectiles, he has this little healing aura you can put on screen, and then when he's in it, he is healing. You can actually see the effect of it adding to him. And you can do it behind. So you can put it behind you while you're doing your zoning, and the opponent, they have to get it. E even if Dr. Fate doesn't have the life lead, he can regain the life lead by now, healing while he's standing That in doesn't it. just heal him, though, right? No, it just heals him. I thought it did not take away meter. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ty. Way to go, Tyler. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we will get to something else that can do it. Maybe that's what I'm talking about. We will get to something else. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about something Blow up central. Moving right along. So anyway, and then... Then he does have an up-close special move, which, even though it's an up-close special move, it plays into his defensive playstyle. So he has this glyph, where he actually shoots it back, and this will knock the opponent far away, and this is safe on block, and it has pushback on block. Can you block for a second? Yeah. Just hold down? Yep. So you can see, Dr. Fate will be pushed back. So this would be the move you use up-close. Oh. What? Can you block for a second? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so even when you're up close with Dr. Fate and you want to create space, this would be a great move to use. And the meter one goes back even further, now you can get hit. And you can see they get pushed way back. So this is kind of your all-purpose, uh, you're up close and you're panicking, and you want to close, you want to make that gap again, this is the move you use, the glyph. Cool. And that's also like one of his main punishers uh, when you punish an unsafe attack. Cool. Then he has... Um, can I do the down back threes? Yeah, let's do the down back threes. He right. has these onks he can summon. Blink. And he summons it, and then it'll float around you. It'll never go away. And then at any point, you can hit down forward three, and it'll summon it on the opponent. That's an unblockable. It'll attach to him and do just a little bit of damage. Mm -hmm. And he can do three of them. So you're free to do it as you want. You can do one, and then go throw some fireballs, or go in. Yeah. Then eventually when you have all three, you can summon all three, they'll all attach, and then a pillar will go up. That's awesome. And then that will launch the opponent. Now do those track. They do. They will go to where the opponent is. They're but very there's, smart. There's, there's, a, there's a meta game with inside playing him of trying to get them all attached. Right. It you know obviously. So that one did not get attached. Yeah. You you have to you have to get the opponent standing so that all three will come down. They won't just home, but they will track on where you were before you start moving. Right. And if you don't get hit by all three, the pillar the will pillar, not come The down. pillar is only the bonus for hitting all three. So like Tyler said, the the meta game here is taking the time, like maybe you end your combo and then you get a pillar out. And then later you could do something and get a pillar out. And then, or not a pillar, an onk out. And then when you have all three, that's when you try to freeze them up. Maybe freeze this, or, and then you get all three and then you're gonna get your combo. Which you didn't do. But Which I didn't do. Well, I wanted to see some sweet combinations. I'll get to that. Whoa, all right. I'll get to that. That's, so then, can we, we talk about that real quick, combinations? Combinations? It's a new thing. Well, I always try to create new terminology. Yes. Corner Instead of comms. combos, corner, corner comms. comms was one of mine. Uh, What's on TV? You okay. need to throw yeah. the TV. That's you a are. classic. The new one is combinations. So would it now be corner combinations? No corner combs, no. Okay. So when you do a comp combo, it's now called a combination. Oh, continue. Uh, it, I don't... It is law. Will it catch on? No. Oh, okay. Corner yeah. comms kind of catch on. Kind of, kind of, kind of. So his final special move is my favorite, Sheridan's Lock, which is a magic spell he uses, which actually locks out level interactions for the opponent. You can see that onk in front of the background bounce there. Here, you see this little tablet. That is now locked, and Derek cannot use it. I cannot use it. But Dr. Fate still can. This nice. is one of my favorite parts of his design. Yeah, it's uh, so cool. The, the design team were, it was really smart and kind of went a little outside the box with some of his stuff. Like, yes. kind of going into a magical realm, you know? Like, that's not something he does to someone else, but he's affecting, again, the environment. if you want to talk about how you space control, right. not only does he do it with his damage, he does it by not allowing the opponent to use things to help them control space. Yes, it's so. really, really, really creative. So his character power is dark magic. Ooh. You can see the bar at the end, and that shows that it's available. And then you turn it on, he turns red, and it begins to count down. And this is a buff to all of his special moves. His fireballs are now red, and they do significantly more damage. Oh boy. His orb... Is now... Oh, <laughs> his orb does significantly more damage. And then, it does bigger reactions for other moves. For example, his down back two will now push you back. Instead of just a little bit, it pushes you back full screen. And the meter burn one, this is the big deal, it's a full-on combo. Style. What? It's that's awesome. Look at this. Look at this. Magic. Oh, uh, magical. So you asked earlier for combos, and this is really the key to his combos. What I asked for? Com uh, combination. Sorry. Jeez. Normally, Dr. Fate isn't really a combination character. He's, he's a pew, 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 pew. Right. He's, he's more of a keep away character, but once he has this out, the EX down back two becomes his prime combo starter. Wow, that's awesome. Um, his healing thing actually turns into a damaging ore, and if the opponent gets in that, they are damaged. Their health will start to drain. Ooh, there it goes. And you can again set it behind you if you think the opponent would maybe teleport behind you, or you can set it in front of them, and now it's a shield that the opponent, you know, they can no longer just walk through. Right. Another change it does is it actually changes up his throw. 
His throw has a different follow-up at the end, and in the corner, he gets a combination. <laughs> it's catching on. It's yeah. catching on. Let's see. I don't know if catching on is catching on with one person. Counts. His throw will do a lot more damage, and then it'll bounce up. Uh, yeah, we'll call it. Can I, can I say how much crap I get for dropping combos? And this guy over here, just dropping them left and right. And he also does combos. You, you take a few times. You take, you, you. Yeah. I mean, my track record's like 50-50. Yours is like never and never. <laughs> so. And I wouldn't have even said that, Tyler. I, that is me. No, that's fine. That's that fine. Me. Um, It also affects the onks. The three onks behave the same. He can get three of them, except they will become traps on the floor that hit individually. <laughs> And you can do this, they don't have to hit the opponent. They'll go on the ground, and then they'll explode individually. And the cool thing is, if he has two onks out, or one onk, if you turn your trade on, they still turn on and turn red and turn into dark magic. Awesome. Um, all right, you wanna do so, a super move for fun? Yeah, to me, the idea, the base idea here would be, when you don't have trade on, your pure defense. You want to stay as far away as possible. But trait makes everything more aggressive. He gets his combo starter. He gets his damage curse. These become offensive. The onks become offensive. So he's all about when you need to make a comeback or when you want to extend your life lead. That's when you turn the trait on. And then you have your 10 seconds or however long it is to he's even more powerful. To also, go ham as the children say. To go ham. Mm -hmm. right. So a super move, even a super move is just far reaching. Nothing is for us here. Yeah, cool. There's lots of little Dr. Fates stuck a in Lots of Dr. Fates, yeah. right. All right, cool. All doctors. All doctors. Yeah. All PhDs. Let us move into, go to his second. All right, second loadout. Second loadout, yes. So for this one, let me see what I wrote down on the old paper. Here we go. Okay, so this one we got obviously an, a sweet new outfit. A yeah, yes. gear set for him. He's got some kind of some bronze looking going on, some purple. Um, so with this one, we, we've gave, given him uh, the Seeker Orb. Oh, this is a good one. So the thing about Dr. Fate is a lot of his abilities modify or somewhat alter or improve a lot of his magical attacks rather than like totally replace them. Yeah. Like, for example, his orb is slower moving, but it will now actually home in on the opponent. He can delay if he wants to release it, when he wants to release it, or he can just do it. And it'll actually track him if he's jumping, if he moves around. And you can see that it's slower moving, so he can actually just go in and actually meet it. Like, he can reach the opponent before the orb does. And that allows for all kind of setups. Yeah, if you can do them. Tyler, go. Roasted. No. You burn. Well, Derek's also jumping around. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. And I don't care. Okay. Um, is there, or, uh, I was gonna say, we do meter we, we Yes, also, you can okay. also stop it. Okay. And then? And then? The second one is... I... I he, he didn't write it down. I didn't write it down. She did not write oh, it down. Um, it's the... Yes. It's the... Nope. Do the back, do the, do the onks. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, the move okay. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. There it is. Oh, I know. This changes his healing and his curse move. And it makes it so that it will act, be active if he goes into it. So let's say you have the healing orb out. If you go into it, it'll explode and immediately just give him health back. And oh. the opposite is true of the dark one. He can have it out there, and if the opponent goes in, it immediately explodes. Right. So this makes it even more dangerous as a shield to use. So you can have it out, and the opponent really has to be careful. And then, you could couple that with the orb, so the opponent's afraid to get in. I am terrified. Yeah, and then you start doing your orb, and you've really filled the screen with your trinkets. With your trinkets. Mm. I would have gone with magical spells. Magical spells. Okay. Trinkets or items. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, let's move on to the next loadout. So that would definitely be an example of a loadout to just continue what he's already good at, yep. which is keep out. So, what would happen in a matchup where Dr. Fate gets zoned out himself. Another powerful zoner, like say, Deadshot. Mm -hmm. Or a mirror match. Or a, perhaps a mirror <laughs> match, which you don't like. I don't like mirror matches. 
Absorption spell turns his glyph into a projectile absorbed. He will actually absorb it. Time it, Steve. I got it the first time. There it All is. Alright, look at that. Yeah, there and it's go. a very e it's pretty easy to do in reaction. It covers up a lot of the screen. It's very fast. I like how the little projectile just yes, goes flying off. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm out. So this would be a good one to use, like I said, against someone else who also is a good zoner. So Dr. Fate will always have the zoning advantage since projectiles are meaningless to him. And then, what if it was a matchup where Dr. Fate needs to get in? He has increased mobility with an air dash. Another gear, yes. gear ability you can use. Awesome. So normally he's not a character that wants to get in close, and he has kind of some trouble getting in close. So if you're having that, you can use this one, and it's a lot easier to close the gap. And once you've controlled the ground with your projectiles that we talked about, you can then use it to control the air with your air dash. Cool. Well, right. Jed, let's 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 get back to the, get back to the boys here and say. Uh,